Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this worship celebration. We thank you for music. We thank you for hymns. We thank you for prayers and confessions. We thank you for the sharing of the peace. And now, Lord, we thank you for the word. As we partake of this message, may we find nourishment for our soul. Pause us long enough that we might hear a word from on high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A day in your courts, a day in your courts. An adventurer takes a solo trip. He opens up a big paper map he has of the United States of America. He puts it on the ground. He puts a dart in his hand and closes his eye and allows the dart to drop. The dart lands on, Miss, on Missouri. He takes a flight to Missouri. He gets a rental car and he drives on his GPS to exactly where the dot was on his map. Mountain Grove, Missouri. I bet you guys have not heard of that. <laughs> Neither had he. He gets to this small town and he suddenly thinks to himself, I cannot possibly do this. Then he has another thought. It's now or never. He goes up to a middle-aged elderly woman and tells her what I have just shared with you. He threw a dart on a map and it landed on this location. He took a plane, he rented a car, and now he's, he's here. The lady responds suspiciously, suspiciously. So the dart landed on my house? She then hands him a bottle, a small water bottle like the ones we pass out on July 4th. Then what happens next is she introduces herself and then she lets the hospitality rip. She introduces him to lots and lots of people. He gets to drive a mobile grass cutter. He meets her horse. He goes to the farm and he learns how to fix a wired fence. He notices how calm he felt, calmer than he's felt in many weeks, just doing the mundane of fixing a fence. They take a 30-minute drive to meet the middle-aged woman's mom. He gets more hospitality as they hand him homemade mint tea and serve him up a meal. More family members come and more outdoor animals he gets to meet. Then he gets to tour the local fire department. Then they take him to the local river for a swim. All of this happened and so much more in one day. This is where we enter the biblical text. One day, says the psalmist, is my preference. One day away with God. Verses one and two in the message translation says, what a beautiful home. Have you ever entered someone's home and felt that? The paint on the wall, the decorations, the furniture, a friend of mine moved this summer, and in her finished basement are these bright, bright yellow walls with frame artwork plastered all over them. African wood carvings, a bright orange desk and chair and orange towels with a red couch and orange pillows. I wouldn't have put those colors together, but they were. And there's this light that pours in. The psalmist comments on God's home. I've always longed to live in a place like this, always dreamed of a room in your house where I could sing for joy to God. Further down, verses 10 and 11 keep the vibe going. One day, not two or three or a week, just one day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship beats thousands spent on Greek island beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the palace of a sin. This psalmist has a preference for spending time with God. 
this psalmist has a real preference for one day in God's court because when the psalmist goes there, he anticipates the presence of God. God, God is here. There was a real sense in the Old Testament of God's presence being in such spaces. Interestingly, we have a community member that comes periodically to our church, always after church is over. She is a woman of few words, but she sometimes feels like the psalmist of this text. She sits in our pews ever so quietly, and she sits, and she sits after we've gone to the fellowship hall. She's sitting in here quietly, and then she'll leave an offering, and she'll exit as quietly as she came. There is something about this space that speaks to her, and maybe even some of you. According to W.H. Bellinger, Psalms 84 looks forward to arriving at the temple and rejoicing in God's presence in that sacred space. The United Family Camp gathered this year, last Sunday exactly. Thank you, Paul, for bringing a powerful word. While Paul was preaching, our family camp was away at Tower Hill last week. It is always amazing to me to look at urban dwellers that would be us, marvel at the wildlife. You would have thought it was Thanksgiving the way the kids hunted down the turkeys. I'm so glad they didn't catch them. And yet we all stood still, like we weren't gonna mess with the deers. Nobody chased the deers. But there was this stillness of life, the gentleness of the morning as the sun attempts to rise on a cloudy day the breeze tickling the leaves on trees, the sound of insects doing their things mingled in with the sounds of birds, nature somehow calming us all. It's hard, if not impossible, to feel the presence of God, so much so that parents yearn to come back year after year. I encourage each of the participants to try and take a little bit of that still moment back with them into the city. Hold on to it. There are places that make us feel closer to God. Tower Hill Camp is one of them. The rainforest in South America, Mount Everest in Nepal, safaris across the southern countries of Africa, the Mecca, Jerusalem, the Taj Mahal, the seven wonders of the world, except there aren't just seven anymore. I know that many of you in your travels could add some to the list where you went and you felt the presence of the Lord. But you don't have to travel all the way around the world to feel God's presence. Some create spaces in their homes for the purpose of spending preferable time with God. For me, it's often my back porch. The other day there was a storm brewing on the horizon and I was just sitting in my chair, looking up at the sky with the wind in my face, looking, and I could feel God's presence. Wherever those spaces are, these places reek of beauty and they reek of peace. We stand almost immobile in their presence. They force us to see and feel God's presence. The presence of the God is definitely here. This past week, the Democratic National Convention came to our city, Chicago. I wanted to go. I hear people say putting it out there in the atmosphere, so I put it out there in the atmosphere that I wanted to go to the DNC. One of my associates informed me, and I saw a couple other on social media posting pictures, that at the last minute, through a friend, she was able to go. She also shared her journey she would leave home around noon to drive to her church, which was located in the South Loop. She would park her car, and then there, her and her friend would get on the bus at 2.30, take it downtown, transfer over to another bus, and they would arrive at the United Center around 4.30 to stand in line. And from that time until about 11 o'clock at night, they were at the United Center. And it was a blast. And I could see from home that there was a party going on. A deep appreciation for the service of Biden on Monday 
roll call on Tuesday night with a DJ to play a song for every state in the U.S. Wall's son clapping and crying for his dad on the stage Wednesday. Beyonce singing Freedom on Thursday. And countless speakers from array of backgrounds, prayers from different religious traditions to end each evening. It was a lot. A lot was happening. I don't know about any of you. I took a couple of nods at night while I was watching the DNC. Like, this thing is going on for a minute. A lot was happening. As urban dwellers, sometimes we can keep quite busy. We have things to do and people to see and places to go. There's always something to do in this big city, somewhere to go, some trip to take, somebody to call, some event. We can occupy all of our hours without spending one moment with God. We can keep God out easily, and yet the psalmist and this community had a preference for being in God's presence, for worship, for experiencing the move of God internally. It won't happen this one day in court without some intention on our part. There will be things to claim your time always. So turning the car off, getting off the grid, slowing down, turning your ears on and your mouth down, Turning to God first, resisting that temptation to be busy, sitting in the stillness of the moment will only happen because we make it happen. It won't come to us. It will happen because like the psalmist, we desire it to happen and we are intentional about it happening. Psalm 84 is a pilgrimage song sung as a praise by those who were trying to get somewhere. The journey wasn't always easy, but verse 2 reminds us my heart yearns for a day, just one day in God's court. I know if I can get there, everything is going to be okay. I know if I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, everything is going to be okay. There is a blessing in the court awaiting us. Better is one day in your court and read to us this morning than a thousand anywhere else. Better is time spent with you than catching up on the next binge-worthy show. Better is time spent with you than kicking it in these streets. There's a praise song that sings over and over and over. I'd rather dwell in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tent of the wicked. There is something about being in God's presence that replenishes us and makes us better prepared for the journey. Spending time with God is a real investment. So today I began with talking about this guy who dropped a dart to go anywhere in the U.S. and it landed on Mountain Grove, Missouri. Once there, he met a stranger, and that stranger was a little bit suspicious. But after she got over her suspicion, she opened the door to her life. Stuff she took for granted, her life she now excitedly shared and poured out with a stranger simply because he showed interest. She went all out, and he noted in his heart there was no reason for any of it. Why were they so kind to him, taking him in and showing him their life, teaching him how to fix a wire fence, taking him swimming, fixing a picnic, treating him to dinner? They totally changed their day for this unexpected visitor. They even offered him some life lessons. You can't just work, you have to be able to play. It makes life worth living. And they did just that. They worked and they played with him all day, their visitor. But it began with one person putting themselves out there. And that's how it often begins, with one person being willing to put themselves out, with one person buying a ticket, driving to a spot he'd never been, meeting total strangers. One day, 
One day in your presence, O oh God, can make all the difference in the world. Amen.